Welcome to Wrestling With Success, the best and only podcast for the wrestlers of tomorrow. Please welcome your host, Neil Nile Nigel. Oh, right. <clears throat> your host and future champion, Neil McMillan. Yo. Hello, guys and girls, and welcome to episode 17 of Wrestling With Success. And this episode... It's another episode where you've got myself, no guests, me, myself and I, and today I'm here to talk about Mr. Scott Hall. Why Scott Hall? Well, for those of you who don't follow the page, and uh, uh, me on Facebook or Instagram, I basically attended a session at School of Slam uh, Wrestling School in Harwick, Essex, and it was a seminar run by Razor Ramon, the bad guy himself, Scott freaking fucking Hall, Scott Hall, Scott Hall was taking a session. Now, I wasn't going to miss that, and luckily for me, the training school that I normally do it at, Job Kicks, uh they weren't running it on that Wednesday anyway, so I had no excuse. So 100% booked it straight away. It's £30, all very reasonable. £30 to go and see Scott Hall on a good day is good, just to meet the guy, let alone let alone have a seminar and a session. And today I thought it would be a good to share that whole experience with the listeners, yourself. Um, so for those of you that couldn't make it to the seminar, you can get a flavour of what I learned, what it was like, and yeah, it, it lived up to every expectation. Every expectation. So uh, I got in touch with a promoter at School of Slam, uh, and I was like, yeah, I, I want a place that you could have paid to to be a bystander or paid to actually take part in the lesson. I was like, without a doubt, I need to take part in that lesson. Book me in. And uh, one of the other other guys that I trained with, uh, Adam down at Drop Kicks, he was he was booking it down as well. So so even better, there was a friendly face down there as well. So uh, yeah, the day came, packed my bag, all excited. And it's a little bit of a drive to Harwick from where I am, a little a little extra bit anyway. It's probably here at an extra forty minute drive than normal to uh, my training school. So I think overall it was like an hour and a half to get down there. So it's not too bad to go and see Scott Hall, but yeah, it was a bit of a drive. But as soon as I finished work, drove all the way down there from work, solid hour and a half drive, excited the whole way. Packed my bag early this morning, made sure I had all my shit in there, all my stuff, everything. Um, And then as soon as I finished, normally when I finish work, I have about, about half an hour of me time where I can go... Get some, get some banana. Go get a protein bar. Get my water. I can get changed, all ready to go. Now, because it was an hour and a half drive to Harwick, I had, I had about ten minutes to do all that, and I literally managed to got all my stuff rushed. Somebody was holding on to me at work. They were trying to chew my ear off at work, and it was like, no, I'm going to see Scott Hall. Fuck off. You never want to talk to me. Why do you want to talk to me when I literally need to leave right now? And go to Scott Hall. But so I managed to get that Wrangler off my back. Went to get my gym bag to get changed. Um, as I was going through my gym bag, shit, I haven't actually got a top. I've got my uh, uh, gym top that goes over it. But it was hot that day as well. Last thing I wanted to be sweating in my, like, it was like a, not a jumper, but it was an, I don't know what it was. It wasn't, it wasn't skinny enough to warrant me wrestling in it. I would have got very sweaty very quickly. And it wasn't ideal. So I forgot my top. So I thought, look, enough fucking around. I just need to get to get to this uh, seminar. Just drive down there. I still needed to get my bananas and my water, my nutrients, protein bar, just for routine. Not because I have to have them. It's just because that's my routine. And I, uh, that's me in my comfort zone. I got my routine down. I'm happy and I'm good to go. So I thought, look, go get on the road, get towards there. I'll go down the the A12, whatever road it was. There'll be something. There'll be like an Asda or a Tesco or some something I can stop at to get my shit. 
I'm going to have a sip of coffee. Like Stone Cold. A sip of coffee for the working man. For the for the Essex man. I'm trying to make it as loud as possible. So you can reap the benefits of every sip. Yeah, I nearly died. That was a mistake. Wrong hole. So anyway, I thought, fuck it, let, leave it to fate. So I'm driving down the road. 40 minutes, I'm in my own head. Uh, and I couldn't find anything, nothing at all. I just had to get there on time. I hate being late, so I just had to get there. Pulled up, I thought, like, worst case scenario, it's, I know it's at some sort of like caravan place. Like a haven, not a havens, but like a cheaper version of. I'm not sure what it is. I know there's caravans. I know there's going to be there's going to be something there. There's going to be a shop. I can buy me a havens top or something, um, so I can train in that. I can grab me some bananas and apples, possibly if there's like a spa there or something. Who knows? I thought just get there, get my bottles of water. There'll be a cash machine, so I can get my money out to pay the guy, pay the promoter. Turned up, pulled up, loads of people there. I'm late, I've got five minutes to go. Is there a cash machine here? No, fuck. I need to go out and drive and try and find a cash machine because I couldn't find shit on the way there. So I drove out. Luckily, one of the guys uh, said there was one just around the corner. Literally, I Vin Diesel'd it in a Citroen C1. That's my that's my driving to work car. Citroen C1, I was just bombing it round like a menace. Finally found it, saw a shop. Got my um, money out, thirty pound, lovely. Went and got a bottle of water um, and a Lucasade. I was going to depend on a Lucasade for my other nutrients, so I just necked that. I couldn't find any bananas, apples, frozen, whatever. Managed to get back within one minute to spare. Fucking lovely, right? Put my bag down, reach into my bag to start getting my my stuff out, and then fucking Scott Hall. Scott freaking Hall, and he's and he's massive, he's huge. So much to, I was expecting. I mean, I knew he was a big guy, but I was expecting older age. He would kind of shrink down, but he's a big dude, big dude. He's already in the ring by the time I get there, uh, and he starts speaking. I'm in awe. I'm I'm halfway through my bag, just about to get my my gear on my my knee pads and elbow pads, and he starts talking. I just drop what I'm doing. I'm going to listen to him. And I start, and he starts with, and I quote, Dusty Rose once said to me that all you need is a bag and I'll show you how to make a million dollars. And I'm here to tell you today that with one bag, you can make a lot more than a million dollars. And boom, sold. Scott fucking Hall. Brilliant. So that's what he started with. And I thought with a Scott Hall session, I didn't really know what to expect. I just thought, you know... It would be we'll be doing holes and psychology and all different parts, just like a normal training session, like stopping and starting, stopping and starting. Um, and uh, yeah, he's there in the ring, and then he goes, "Right, I want you to pair up, do your warm up, do whatever warm up you have to do, pair up. I want an eight minute match, and afterwards, I want a one minute promo. And that's it. That that the the ended there. He got out the ring." Fuck. Shit. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the deep end. I, I like... That's challenge fucking accepted. But shit balls. I literally... I hadn't even... i just turned up. Scott Hall drops a, a quote like that from Dusty Rhodes. And then he wants an eight minute match. And a, a one minute promo. And... Wow. I mean, don't get me wrong. In On the drive, I was prepared for the promo. In my head, I thought, I, I'm just going to get one in the bag just in case. Came up with a few ideas for a promo, just in case. Um, Wrestling-wise in a ring, I knew... I mean, it was, it's good that Adam was there, um, who my partner was. And so we could just... We could partner up, which is good. So it wasn't necessarily with a stranger. Um, although, we're both very, very green. My my time in the ring, I had I think I've had like three times in the ring, and I've only really put on one kind of five to six minute match with uh, Luke down at training. And don't get me wrong, I enjoyed that. That went a lot better than I thought it, than I thought it would. But I am incredibly 
incredibly inexperienced when it comes to ring time. Um, so, yeah, shit. And Adam, I think uh, he's been in a ring a few times. He's probably trained more in a ring more than me. He's gone, gone to a mu- few more sessions where there is an actual ring there. Um, but I think in terms of actually performing in a ring in front of people, he had absolutely nothing. So, yeah, I mean, we were both shitting ourselves straight away. Um, so I thought, no, bollocks. I'll go, went to the toilet, sort myself out, get my knee pads in. And I just said, like, w- luckily the week before we did a training session on chain wrestling. And it, and it was just, I think it lasted for about four or five minutes. And I just said, look, we'll start with that because we know that. We've done it last week. We know we can do it. Um, and we'll, we'll add some bits and layer it on as we go. Um, but I said, like, straight off, like, do you want me to be heel? I'll, I'll try and take control. I have no problem. I'll just try and, like, worst case scenario, I'll just beat you up for eight minutes and then you can have a shine and a comeback at the end or something like that. And that I'm, I'm trying to tell him, but, yeah, I really, I'm just as experienced as him. I, I know nothing uh, in terms of eight-minute match. Like, if it was four minutes, I'd be like, okay, four minutes comfortable i've done this before i've done this like i've put on something to show that's four minutes long eight minutes just wow fuck so anyway we started playing this match out we got the chain part out um that we had and then we started adding bits we were adding layers to it we were adding this and i thought i the the only way that we're gonna stand out and that we're gonna be able to make a good showing of ourselves is that if I make him vulnerable, um, incredibly vulnerable, and I just be a prick, absolute prick throughout the whole thing, and so hopefully, so they fucking hate me, and they love him, as long as, as as long as we can get that across, and we do the chain that we did last week, and it's not too sloppy, I'm happy, and I said like, at the end of the day, we're wrestling in front of Scott Hall, you can't buy well, you can, because I did. But you can't buy experience like that. Worst case scenario, he rips us apart after our training session. It's the best money we would have spent because we're going to learn so much from it. Like, I failing doesn't it doesn't bother me in a way. I I would prefer to fail loads because I learn more from failing than I do from putting on a clinic and then getting a load of compliments afterwards. So I wasn't bothered about that, but still nervy, and I was obviously nervy for for Adam. And then, so we're standing there. We kind of got a match, uh, a matches going, and it was like, right, who's who's up? Five minutes later, he was like, right, oh, we need the first match. So the ball was right, the, the the sand timer had started to, had started uh, had started pouring down, and then we watched uh, the first guys went into the match, and fuck me, honestly. It was like watching NXT. These guys were just incredible. They were just putting on a show. And it was just like, shit. If this is the quality we've got to put, live up to, we're screwed. And we kept watching more and, ma- more and more matches. And I tell you, there was no match there where I thought, oh, yeah, no, we, we can top that. I was uh, Honestly, it was, it was horrible to watch. But the amount of talent down there, it was nice to see as well. So... Yeah, our backs were really up against the wall. So anyway, I think there was loads of matches to put on, loads of good reactions. Luckily, Scott Hall said to everyone, react as if it was a fucking WrestleMania. And, and we all did, uh, the whole crowd did. Uh, they boo when uh, the heels would say something, they cheer to give the, the faces a shine. It, was, it wasn't quite in there, which was quite satisfying. It makes you feel a little bit more comfortable anyway. Um, and I was like, shit, I still haven't got a top. I was like, Adam, my bad. I'm going to be topless. Things are about to get sweaty, and uh, yeah. So just, just a, just a heads up. And he was like, no bother. So anyway, I think, I think we went like 12, 12, and I think there was like four matches after us. There's a lot of people. A fuck ton of people were there. I'm gonna have another sip. Here we go. This is the loudest one yet. We're only choking. Now then, um, so then it finally came to our time, and I just said, 
All right, Adam, do you mind? I'm just going to tell them that you're a trainee. It's your first time in the ring. They know all the pressure's off of you. No problem at all. And I said, well, kick it off. I'm just going to slap you in the face. And I said, I'm going to slap you, and I'm just going to be a prick, okay? And I'll tell you, I'll tell them that you're a trainee. Never been in a ring before. So their expectations are incredibly low, but they're going to think that, they're, they're going to look to me as if I'm experienced, and I'm fucking not. So... Step in the ring. Hi guys. Give it up for Adam. It's his first time being in a ring. Give him a round of applause. They give him a round of applause. Go to shake his hand and then boom, slap. And it couldn't have gone any better. It literally couldn't have got the slap was brilliant. It made Scott Hall kind of it kind of woke him up a little bit and just whoa. So that was good. The fact that I kind of make Scott Hall go shit was was pretty good. Um, so the match itself, uh, we forgot a fair amount, um, a pretty much fair amount. The, it, the only good things about it really was the slap. Um, I, I there was a lot of people booing me, which was good. I, people didn't like me, which was nice, I think. Um, and, uh. Yeah, we did a, bit, a few chain spots. A good, there was a few bit like good re- reversals and uh, chain wrestling. I heard somebody say, "Wow, they're actually wrestling like in the crowd," which was nice. Um, and then, yeah, then he clothesline. I well, knew he was going to throw a clothesline. He clotheslined the shit out of me. Now, that, throughout the whole um, throughout the whole seminar, Scott Hall kept saying to people, uh, "That's what he was picking on was people's clotheslines." And he started off with it. And as the as the night went on. People were hearing his feedback to other people because he was very loud about it. He would tell everyone's feedback in front of everyone and critique everyone's matches. And what he kept saying was clotheslines, just rather than just throwing a straight arm out, it's just kind of curve your arm round and just so you kind of ended up on the neck, the neck and top shoulder. And he described it as like you're throwing a baseball. So I'm trying to, I'm, I'm doing the action here, but you can't hear it. So it's kind of like a V, like you're kind of it's like a shit tense muscle, rather than a straight arm. And um, I hope that helps. I hope you get the image. So Adam must have heard this critique the whole way, and he threw he fucking threw that baseball right through my neck, and the connection was honestly the connection was sweet, and uh, it was a good response from the crowd. Uh, apart from that, was probably it. That was probably that. That those are the two high spots. It was my slap at the beginning, and then the, the clothesline. There was a bit. There was some stuff going on around. I tried working him around every turn buckle, but it was what it was. We done what we needed to do. We didn't forget too much. We didn't fuck up too much, which is pretty nice. Uh, we got the feedback at the end. We survived, um, and yeah, I mean, it was good. Got through it. Learned a lot. Every word. And I mean, the fact that I can say that Adam and I wrestled a match to be critiqued by Scott Hall is like we wrestled a match whilst where Scott Hall was the referee. It's fucking surreal. And the fact that I could give Adam that slap, get a reaction out of Scott Hall, um, and then Adam can get his spot and just clothesline my fucking face off and uh, looking back in the video, you can see Scott Hall actually wince. It wasn't just the clothesline; it was the connection as well. And it was just fact. It was the fact that our match, the build-up to that clothesline, the the crowd was starting to get a little bit flat because obviously we weren't putting on a clinic. And then all of a sudden, that clothesline, everyone just kind of fuck. Um, so yeah, incredible experience. Lot, so many good matches down there. So many good ones. A uh, lot of good, different, loads of different characters down there. Loads of good characters, um, and the, the quality's high. The, such high quality down there. Um, so the, there's all the matches out of the way, and he was like, "Right now, what we're going to do is it's promo time. I want you to basically you're going to you're going to talk about your debut. I'm going to give you a guy, whether it be Cena." Roman Reigns or Flair, uh, Charlotte Flair, Sasha Banks. I'm going to give you someone and you've got to cut a one minute promo about your debut at the O2 October 26th 
um, at the time. October 26th at the O2 this Saturday. You need to mention all of that. I want you to cut a promo. And he, I think he mentioned as well, give uh, give whoever you've got a little bit of a shine, build them up a little bit, and then build yourself up 10 times at the end. Um, so in my head, I thought promo, all right, this, I'm not as worried about this. I had a promo in the back of my head. Promos don't really bother me. Um, people who don't know, I, I DJ. Um, I'm a wedding DJ. I do all all sorts of DJing um, outside of work. So I have to be on the microphone a lot. At first, it did make me very nervy. But as with time, I, saying stuff on a microphone doesn't bother me. So getting in front of people, being the centre of attention doesn't really f- like sway me as much as it may be other people. Um, so I was like, right, I'm actually quite comfortable with this. Not as nervy as the other one, so let's do it. Um, obviously, in my head, on my promo, I didn't have anyone in spe- specific. It was more of an introductory promo. Um, but this one was like, I had to kind of... I, I was either going to give him Roman Reigns or John Cena. So Scott Hall walks around tells everyone right you've got Cena you've got Charlotte Flair you've got um, you've got Roman Reigns and so on and so forth came up to me and Adam you've got uh, Roman Reigns points to me you've got Cena points to Adam so I had Roman Reigns I was like right tried to think and all of a sudden there was like 30, that I was very aware that there was 30 people in a room and I just didn't have the headspace for it so I'd step outside for a se- second just get my bearings to where I was in my promo before Um and yeah, so I finally got it in my head how I was going to adjust it to make it about more one person. And then as I, as I was standing there waiting, I just kept getting more and more ideas in my head, like good ideas on how to improve the promo. Watching it a lot, um, watching other people's promos. I think I, did, I was like tempt or something. Watching other people's promos. Good promos, uh, good stuff. The thing people were failing on was that it had to be a minute long. So they would get to like 30 seconds and then... When it gets to 30 seconds, Scott Hall, who was uh, just behind the hard cam, would kind of give you a, uh, it would show you a kind of, put do a hand signal to to show that it's 30 seconds left. And when he was doing that to people, they were going off, in their head, they must have been going, oh fuck, 30 seconds, I'm, not, I'm nearly finished. And then people start kind of uh, ad-libbing near the end, uh, and all rushing or... So it was, it, the main thing was timing was what people were off and people were coming up short. So in my head, I thought, I, I'm just going to go for it then because worst case scenario, I'm going to be long, but I don't think I'll be longer than a minute. I think I can get it out. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I stepped up cause, just to get it out of the way. Um, I, feel, I think I started well. I was quite happy with it at the beginning. Um, I thought I'd do a little bit of something different rather than just start looking at the camera. I started looking at my phone just to do something a little bit different. And I made uh, made them wait for me before I started the promo, uh, the character anyway. And then so I started the promo. Uh, started strong, I thought it was all right. And then, uh, and then I don't know what happened. I think uh, I saw his 30 second sign and I was like, okay, yeah, no, I can finish this off. I can seal it off. And then before you know it, I don't know what he did. I think he was like, he did a countdown or something. Or I had 10 seconds left. And I was like, fuck. And I started to do my fin- my my ending off it to wrap it up. And as I was saying it, I just went completely blank. Completely B-rabbited it. Eight miled it. And if you haven't seen the film, go see the film. I choked right in front of Scott Hall. And it was fucking horrible. So I started off fine. Saw a hand signal at one point, And I thought, fuck. And then I went blank. For about five seconds, and then I caught it, caught it back again, and then before you know it, I just heard a, Aah! and that was Scott Hall ending the promo off. Shit, fuck bollocks. Um, so that was annoying, but it was good the fact that, like I said, I like failing. So now I know to just shorten it and do it shorter than go, rather than going for longer. Um, so I mean, that was a nice. That was good, the fact that, A, I got to do a promo in front of him. I think the promo at the beginning saved me for the fluff at the end. Um, but, yeah, got out of the ring. He, he said he, he enjoyed it. It was just the timing. Um, so he gave me good feedback from it. 
Um, it was just the fact that the timing. He, he basically said, like, if Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon's going to be standing there. If you're in WWE, you get hired. Vince McMahon's going to be standing there. If you do a promo like that, you've only got a minute. As soon as you go over a minute, the cameras just go off you and you're just left standing there like a fucking chump. Which I would have been standing there like a fucking chump. Um, after my choke. So, that was daunting. Uh, his tips for, for promos was uh, ensure, like, just do it in front of the mirror. Like, just, just speak to yourself. Believe in what you're saying as well. Don't try to, don't try to convince people too hard. Just convince yourself first and then it becomes easier. Just believe in actually what you're saying when you're saying it rather than, I don't know, overacting it, I suppose. Um, so it's good advice. Um, and he said about levels as well. He said everyone used to shout and then Jake the Snake came along and everything was quiet and everything was emphasized in voice, which it was, and it worked. And now he said just just don't be afraid to try different levels because you don't have to shout all the time. You don't have to speak like this all the time. Um, so it's good advice. Uh a lot of good promos down there as well uh, uh, from everyone. Uh, his tips as well, a lot of the other feedback from res- uh, from the wrestling uh, part of it was uh, obviously slow it down. That's the main thing. Like Some of it was establish your character before you even get into the ring. As soon as you come out, do what you need to do, walking around the ring to showcase yourself to give people that indicator of what your character is and what he or she is all about rather than doing that in the ring. He said everything, you can do it outside the ring. And he mentioned mainly about Ric Flair, about how he'd kind of saunter around. And people just knew who Ric Flair kind of was by just his walk around the ring and his entrance uh, or getting the, the ref to open the ring, just showcasing how fucking important he was and all stuff like that. Um, so that was good advice. Another bit of good advice for uh, for actual in ring wrestling, he said he there was a few matches that were a little bit rough around the edges, um, which isn't a bad thing because it makes it look like it's an actual scrap, like you're both actually fending. And he he said that he said that he would much rather see a rough match where it's a little bit edgy and it's a little bit I don't know like not rehearsed and perfect. He said now. He says a lot of people nowadays just they try to re- rehearse everything, so everything's perfect, everything lands on key, and everything's smooth. And he said it can look good, and it's got it's got an audience, but just having that little hint of uh, roughness to it uh, can make it a lot more interesting, uh, a lot better match. So those was his main feedback from that was his main feedback from wrestling and promo stuff and you can't really beat experience and feedback like that from Mr. Scott Hall Um, so then we sat down and it was question time Um, obviously there was a few questions Uh, the main questions and this is when it really started to get real was obviously uh, asking about his past with wrestling Um, who was his worst opponents and stuff like that he said his favourite opponents to work with Shawn Michaels obviously because he's a friend uh, worst person was he said uh, Bret Hart just because Bret Hart was all about Bret Hart not about anybody else really it was uh, Bret Hart only cared about his reputation rather than actually earning money he said Scott Hall Scott Hall said that he earned millions just by getting beat all the time and he said that didn't bother me in a way because he would earn money that way whereas Bret would protect himself to just not really earn or amount to to much, but to to because he was that keen on his on his reputation. So that was good advice. Um, somebody asked if they if he still speaks to the Vince and the company, and he was like, "I text X Pac Kevin Nash all the time. He's always messaging them." Like he said, like they're, they're his sisters, and uh, that uh, he doesn't text Triple H as much anymore, but he'll he'll text him every now and then if he needs something. And that's when it was just like. Fuck, he, this guy standing right there has got Triple H's phone number on his phone and he could literally just text him 
there and then. And that's when it started to get real about how his Razor Ramon character came in, about how Vince McMahon had never seen Scarface. Um, and that was what Scott Hall had put forward to to Vince was that you need a bad guy or well, you're looking at the bad guy. And he he based the character on a scar, a Scarface. And obviously if Vince McMahon hasn't seen Scarface and Scott Hall starts doing Scarface, he's going to be sold. And he's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of funny stories. It's hard to tell them they're his stories. So um, I'd recommend you either listen to another podcast with Scott Hall on. We're not there yet. And, uh, or look out for like some YouTube videos because he's a funny guy as well. One main thing I'll say about Scott Hall is, I mean, I watched a video like two days before. I was getting excited. I was getting, I was getting fangirl about it. And, um, I watched a YouTube video, just a kind of biography of Scott Hall, just to learn a little bit more about him. And, uh, fuck, did I click on the wrong link? I watched this, the, the worst. Uh, documentary about him about how like uh, he killed someone when he was younger um, and then how heavy into drugs he was um, and there was a, a clip of him turning up at an indie show and he was and he had in, had an injury I think the night before and he had only just got dis- discharged from hospital and he went to the in- this uh, this show that had been promoted for and he could barely make it out of the curtain he was getting ho- carried out um, really the promoter shouldn't have actually let him out because he was an absolute state but the promoter said he let him out so he could show what had turned up to the show or something like that and if you uh, don't watch it because it was horrible to watch but um, fuck yeah I watched that and I think it was like part one of a two part series because uh, I, I messaged Adam and he had watched the second part where it was like after he had been all through those trials and tribulations and how he improved, I'd watched all the, the nitty gritty and shit like that. So, I, yeah, I was like, fuck, he killed a guy, he's done loads of drugs. Oh, who am I going to get? And I knew he'd uh, turn himself around. I think he did DDP yoga or something like that. So I knew he'd turn himself around. So I was, But you just don't know what Scott Hall was going to turn up. And I've got to say, the Scott Hall that turned up, he didn't say a bad word about anyone. He was so positive so positive about everything no there was no bitterness at all uh, i mean even the the most bitter thing he said the worst thing he said was about bret hart and everything he said about bret hart it was fair and he never he he said he never said anything that he wouldn't have said, said to brett's face and there was no bitterness around it and everything he spoke about every person he spoke to he gave he gave his time um and he would. There was no bad words. There was critique in there, but nothing negative. No negativity whatsoever. So, just massive props to Scott Hall for that. Like he was looking a lot better than the documentary that I saw. Anyway, fuck, he looked. He looked terrible, but he looked incredible compared to that. He was so nice to everyone. Um, he, yeah, Q and A. We sat there. I think we run over fifteen twenty minutes. Um, got in the ring. Had a group picture. Got off. Uh, got. A picture one to one just with Scott Hall, which is just surreal and like really surreal. And then, yeah, uh, closed it down. And um, yeah, no, so really good, really good experience, worth every minute of it. Thrown in the deep end, uh, and yeah, happy with the outcome. Learned so much, so much. And not only that, going down to the school of slam, Harwick, uh, there's like it's like a whole new world down there. Incredible talent. Like it's a anno- it's annoying that the amount of talent that's down there. But a load of good guys, all like a family. Everyone got on, and it was like they united down there. So that's props to you guys. If any of you are listening to uh, to the School of Slam guys, um, Chris Klein. I just want to mention you as well. There was a guy there. I mean, I know on my sessions, I stand there and I record every everyone's kind of show and tell or showcase just so I can show them afterwards because I know how much it helps me to help others. I'm the video guy. And this dude, Chris Klein, he was standing there. The ring was higher than him, so he had a raised arm. He had his new iPhone, I think he had iPhone 8, new iPhone 8, standing there filming every match. All eight-minute matches, probably, around, I don't know how many matches. A lot of minutes were filmed. A lot of minutes was filmed. 
And for him to stand there with his hand above his head to film those matches, it's weird because no one else should really appreciate it as much as me, I don't think. I still appreciate it, but I appreciate that I know how much it hurts just to stand there to film like two minute or three minute matches throughout the whole throughout the whole night, let alone doing all that. And then he done all the promos as well. So I had to co- kind of go over to him at the end and say like, fair fucking play for doing that. And, um, and I think he was excited anyway. He had the new iPhone, 256 gigabytes. So I think uh, it gave him every benefit. And then like two days after, he's edited them all. And like the, these pro videos are sent through off the match. Um, so yeah, uh, props to that. Um, just want to say props to, to Mark and Paul uh, as well for setting it up and letting uh, an outsider come down to, to meet yourselves and take part in the seminar. Uh, really means a lot and um, the guy taking for t- uh, all the pictures as well I can't I can't remember your name but props to you as well for taking awesome pictures of throughout the whole night of everyone as well it's not just um, it's not just for me it's like the, the benefit it brings to everyone it's just I don't know it was just nice throughout the whole thing the whole thing was an experience that I won't forget um, and yeah really nice to go down there and meet everyone and uh, uh, just a kind of heads up as well at the end of it at the end of it, I mean, I was a little bit like, ah, oh, could have could have done better. I would have been happier if I didn't fluff my promo anyway. I don't think I showcased myself as well as I could have um, after fluffing a promo. Uh, but then at the end, spoke to uh, to to Mark at the end, uh, one of the promoters there, and he's asked me to take part in a rumble match on November twelfth. So I will be making my in ring wrestling debut on any show. At the Overboard Rumble at Dovercourt Caravan Park in Harwick. Looking forward to that. And already there's people in there which I, it would be an honour to have just be in a ring with. And uh, potentially, hopefully, future guests as well. So, yeah, excited for that. And the fact, you know, obviously going to that show and then at the end of it, hearing that bit of news, being asked to be part of that is incredible so looking forward to that november 12th so guys the ball is starting to roll there are going to be character introductions slash promos slash images all very soon so i'm excited keep your eyes out keep your eyes on social media um yeah that's all i can say about it for now so now guys now Guys and girls, it's now time for fan time. Cue the shitty little jingle. Yay, yay. So, let's talk about Hell in a Cell, which is yesterday or tonight. Um, but yesterday. Uh, so, right, let me think. So, Jinder Mahal versus Shinsei Nakamura. Did I say that right? Shinsei? Shinsei Nakamura. Um, yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not really fussed about that. I don't think it's even. It's not a Hell in a Cell match either. So it's just literally just a bog standard match. Uh, I think uh, Nakamura will probably win it, um, unless it gives a final build up to another Punjabi Prison match at the next pay per view. Let's hope not. But uh, in a way, I think Mah- Mahal should keep it. I don't think Nakamura is ready yet. Not after his promos, anyway. Um, I just they they've ruined him. I think if they put a title on him, it would just be a bit flat, like it was when they put it on Ambrose, when they put it on um, Wyatt, and just I don't, it's not right. Keep it on Mah- Mahal. Mahal, oh, fuck's sake, I'm struggling with names here. Um, so I mean, the main match to me is Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens. Should that headline? It's probably a bigger match, but should it headline? Oh, I don't know. I'm a firm believer that WWE Championship match should uh, should always end, but who knows? I think it's a bit ridiculous to hold false count anywhere in a Hell in a Cell. Like, what's the point of that? Why is it Hell in a Cell then if it's false count anywhere? It's just a, it's just a bit. It's very Vince McMahon. That's all I'll say. Um, but yeah, I think that'll that'll be the show show stealer. I think there'll be a few high spots in there from Shane. Uh, Kevin Owens has been a lot better since Headbutt and Vince McMahon so yeah no it's good 
Uh, Natalia versus Flair. Um, uh, uh, I think Flair will win it. Um, just not really sh- sure where she goes from there. Are they going to string this? It's not. I mean, it's not a groundbreaking f- feud, is it? Natalia versus Flair. Um, so even if it is a one and done, who does she go on next? Unless Paige returns. If Paige returns, game on. Put it on Flair and let's build up for Flair and Paige at Mania or something like that. That that right. That's me. I've booked it. All right. So if that happens, fair play. Um, tag team title match. I'm excited for that one as well. Usos promo on uh, last week's SmackDown. Watch it. Usos are getting cheered now. They're getting fucking cheered when she's supposed. They're supposed to be heels because they're just cutting different decent promos, and it's annoying because Roman watch their promos and they're kind of intense. That you genuinely believe that they're just this rough and ready, just pricks who will just knock you, knock you the fuck out. Um. So Roman, watch your cousins. New Day was good. I think that'll be a good match. I think anything with a New Day um, and the Usos in it, Hell in a Cell, it's different. That'll be a great match, I think. Dolph Ziggler, I'm excited just to see Dolph Ziggler's entrance. Like all these entrances, yeah, okay, we got it. But you can't, he can't keep that up. He can't just do three different people's entrances as his entrance every time. So I'm intrigued to see what his entrance is going to be like. Um, it kind of buried. Uh, Bobby Roode it did kind of make me realise oh shit actually yeah if it wasn't for his entrance I genuinely probably wouldn't like Bobby Roode's character his his entrance is what makes Bobby Roode um, and I don't what, which is fine I don't care about that there's a lot of wrestlers out there who have got a better entrance than they have got wrestling ability but don't highlight that to me I don't want to know about it I don't want to have to stop and think oh yeah shit it's true your entrance is all you've got don't fucking tell me that. You ruined the character for me. Uh, Randy Orton versus Rusev. Randy Orton, but I want Rusev to be that old Bulgarian brute that he was before. Um, AJ Styles versus Corbin. Uh, I think AJ Styles should keep it, but I'm interested to see whether they've forgiven Baron Corbin yet. But I, no. Uh, Sami Zayn, I think he'll be part of it. Sami Zayn, I'm calling it now. Sami Zayn will screw over Shane McMahon to team with Kevin Owens. They can't just keep going on with this whole Sami Zayn, uh, Kevin Owens, and then every now and then Kevin Owens just beats him the fuck up and then moves on. Um, yeah, so th- those are my predictions. Other fan time. The Cruiserweight stuff, uh, I, the, if you follow Enzo, Enzo Amore, if you don't do it, if you follow him, he takes that belt everywhere. And it's nice to see, on like every other post on on uh, Instagram or something, the cruiserweight title is just shoved everywhere, and it's they're they're good videos, they're funny videos, and I think it, I hate to say it, it's the best thing they could have done is put that belt on Enzo because they're showcasing the cruiserweight so much more. Like he says as well, two main event spots um, for for the cruiserweight is you I don't know it's unthinkable, um, but it I mean it is it working? Yes, yeah, it's what it's, he's getting the belt um, more shine. But main event spots, I wouldn't do that every week. And especially when they're like, oh, we're going to bring out, the, we've got this newest superstar. And I'm thinking, oh, shit. It's going to be either Rey Mysterio. Uh, it's it's going to be Daniel Bryan's making a comeback or something. Something really good. And uh, Kalisto comes out. And I could have sworn Kalisto was in it anyway. So it wasn't even a shock. So, and you could tell that because it wasn't even everyone's reaction. It was like, huh, huh, huh. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and Raw with a shield, I don't know how I feel about it yet. Seeing them all together makes me feel good inside. It makes me feel good inside. Is it too early? Potentially. But if if they just all come out, if they had good teams, if they bring up uh, Adam Cole and all that from do a whole invasion thing from, from NXT or something like that, I would like that. Even get New Day involved. New Day versus the Shield. I don't know something, something like that. There's a there's a lot of options. I don't think you can do it temporarily. I think if you're going to go Shield, you've got to go Shield for another year, two years, or something like that. I don't think you could do it um, temp- temporarily. It wouldn't work as well. Um, but I'm excited to see anyway. So 
Anyway, guys, fucking hell, I've been speaking for 45 minutes. How did that happen? Anyway, guys, I'll give you a break. We'll be back next week with another episode. I've got, I'm not, I'm not just saying this, I've got a whole list of people who I'm trying to schedule now and a lot of good talent, a lot of good wrestlers. And I, the future is bright. Let's put it this way. There's a lot of good talent going to get in the show, going to get a lot of good advice for you guys, for all you listeners. Um, also, as well, if you guys have started wrestling, if you guys have started training or you've progressed or you've taken some tips from this, I love to hear all of it. So honestly, if you, in fact, I want to give you a little assignment. If you're listening to this now, if you're listening to this now and you haven't got a Facebook page, if you haven't got a page about you or at least put a post up about yourself and about your training, send me the link, tag me in it, send me all sorts of shit. I want to see people reaping the benefits and actually going out and training. I, I would, If I knew that somebody was gone out and trained, made a video and tagged me in it, holy shit balls, I'd be over the moon. So if you're training out there and you're listening to this, you haven't got a post going on on Facebook or something, even if you don't want to share it, I get it, you don't want to share it out with people, just send me a video I would love to see it. Just send me a video or an image or even just a little message describing how you're getting all your training. It would really mean a lot. Um, but like I said, apart from that, guys, this is the end of this episode. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Thank you for following my journey. And guys and girls, I look forward to wrestling a match with you all very soon. Very soon. And especially if you can get a spot in that rumble. So guys and girls... I'll speak to you all next week. Thank you again for listening. And people, I need your help. I would love it if you could pop over to iTunes to leave this podcast a review. Your reviews are so important to me. I need to understand what you think of the show and it helps just raise awareness for everyone else on this show. And not only that, guys, if you have a friend or a relative who you know is an avid wrestling fan, please point them in this podcast's direction.